Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker and we are in an off-road beast. Beast? Tuck yes, Tucker and I have spent the day today so far exercising the off-road chops of this 2022 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Now you're behind the wheel. <laughs> yes. Now you're behind the wheel. This is a little bit of redemption for the 4Runner because this Maybe. Is, this is the first press vehicle we ever received was a 21 model TRD Pro. Left a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth. So here, one year later, we're going to see if maybe the impressions have changed just a little and let Holly drive. Stay tuned. All right, Holly. So, like I said in the intro, first one, first press vehicle GT Garage Talk ever had for a week at a time was before you were partnering with us and doing car reviews. So you didn't get to drive it, but that 2021 didn't leave the best taste in your mouth. Now you get to drive them, give your opinions and thoughts on them. We've had this one almost a week now. You haven't gotten a lot of wheel time in this one, mm -mm. but uh, have things changed a little? You know, I think... No, they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, driving it maybe, maybe has given me a little bit different of a perspective okay. this go round. Because last time I didn't get to drive it, um, and I don't know, we're going to go... I've just kind of ridden around in the city in it. Yep, yep. Um, I remember one of the things the last time that I didn't like is that I felt like there was a lot of road noise. I, I, I don't know, maybe I was in a different mind frame when I rode it, but I haven't felt like that's the case with this one as much. But I also haven't been um, in it in the open highway yep. either. I have. I <laughs> brought this all the way back from Decatur. Uh, Unfortunately, because it is the TRD Pro for its on-road performance, it is a little noisy. It's got Neato Terra Grappler tires. They are a little more noisy than something else. But considering, I mean, you drive a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, mm -hmm. it's all in the same vein. This is a lot more noisy than yes. the yes. Trailhawk did. Uh, this is also, uh, I mentioned uh, in our, my review, and I've told you, the bones of this vehicle date back to 2009. Mm. I was still in college <laughs> and uh, this has gotten some significant upgrades over the year but uh, general impressions are it's a bit dated all the way around and the road noise is also one of those areas where I think some polish and some newness uh, would benefit the Forerunner nameplate. Do you think people who want to drop this, though, that's something that they're looking for? Well, or we, does nobody want red noise? When the biggest competitor to this, I think now, is the Ford Bronco. Very okay. similar approach to things. It's a four-door SUV built on a truck platform. Very capable off-road, independent front suspension. I, I think there are, or are a lot more on-road niceties overall. In that new Bronco because it is a newer platform. It is much more refined and enhanced and oh, well, it well, depends on what level you go on the Bronco, true. right? And what's the cost comparison? We'll get to that in a little bit. But <laughs> let's work through this a little methodically. Uh, we are in the Lime Rush Green, which is the exclusive color for 2022 TRD Pro models. Just like, like a green, green lemon. lemon. What are your thoughts on the exterior styling of this one? I like the styling. Okay. The green is not my favorite color. Um, you liked that lunar rock we had in 2021. Yes. That was, I loved that color. Um, but, I mean, color aside, the vehicle is a very fun styled vehicle. And very boxy, which is very, very in boxy. right now. Lots of visibility out mm -hmm. of here. Hardly any compromises made in 
the realm of visibility and then really that rugged boxy styling. Right. And then my favorite feature is this little button down here, full roll down rear window. You can't get that in many vehicles. The uh, Tundra had that, uh, but the Sequoia did and has given that up for the 2023 model year. So a lot of things changing over at Toyota. Yeah. Hopefully uh, hinted at a potential 2024 model uh, being a all new forerunner. I hope they don't get rid of the full roll down win rear window because that's just a really cool feature. We are turning now to head down some historic brick streets here in Tyler, Texas to see a little bit of this on-road manners. Again, Tucker and I have already taken it off-road, but it can conquer the trails with the best of them. <laughs> Tucker, how's your head? Is it wobbly back there? Nope. Not right now. We've got to get you the wobbly road to downtown. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the wobbly road. Uh-oh, here's one. I'm not going to... Yeah? Oh, that wasn't too bad. So everything that translates to it being capable off-road, the Fox Shocks, those Nitto Terra Grappler... <laughs> those Nitto Terra Grappler tires on the 17-inch wheels kind of help smooth out this train as well. So here we go, Tucker. Here we go. Decommissioned trail tra <laughs> railroad tracks. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Not wobbly. No, Not wobbly. too wobbly. But I'm really wobbly. Wobbly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I Def mean. <laughs> It is a rougher ride. It rides like a truck. It right? rides like a truck. Um, I, to me, I feel like that's to be expected with the kind of vehicle that this is. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like all around it's kind of a rougher ride, but fun if that's what you're looking for. And right? It definitely appeals to me because I, I've had so much fun in this. Uh, we have a steep driveway. I could just pull up it, no problem. I drive a little car, so being able to just barrel up our driveway is fun, or barrel out of our driveway is fun. Uh, curbs don't matter. Rocks don't matter. Like, th this thing don't care, and I really like that, so it, it appeals to me. So, I say, if it's trying to appeal to me, it does an excellent job, because I would make all those sacrifices for what this is capable of off-road but does it appeal to you i mean it driving it like i said is a lot more fun than i remembered it being well i never drove it right, before right. i only rode in it but even then when i was riding with you the other day i told you I'd remembered the seats being a lot more uncomfortable, but I feel like they're, no, no, they're I was they're pretty, pretty wrong. They're pretty comfortable. Yeah, yep, yep. I must have just been grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot going on. It was the 4th of July. It was a lot going on. Um, but the seats are definitely comfortable and it's fun to drive. I don't know that this would be my daily driver. Um, one of the biggest drawbacks for me mm -hmm. is it doesn't have the automatic door rear rear hatch hatch yes yes so uh this still has an old school i mean it up i can't yourself. i can't do that what <laughs> there's a leather strap for you to pull down is this the 1800s i can't no <laughs> the first no. suv ever yeah no yeah. like we've come a long way in that area there should be yeah i mean i know we talk about a lot of features that our next car is gonna have but I feel like that's a given. Power hatch. It yeah. will have a power hatch. What are your thoughts on the interior appointments in here? <laughs> what are your thoughts on the interior appointments in here? I like the way it's styled on the inside. You know, mm -hmm. for me, not having... Yeah, I like the outside. And you like the outside too? Yeah. Um, having the gauge. Analog gauges. Analog gauges. I like not that. In, not inside. Okay, but we're talking about the inside right now. I like having the analog gauges. Mm -hmm. um, I like that the screen is very um, easy, simple. Yep. But the view is kind of fuzzy. Like, I yep. kind of feel like I have to go. It's. What am I looking at here? It's old. It's a little grainy. It's, it's not the best. Grainy. Okay. Um, so it's not just me and my <laughs> No, no. <laughs> it, it's a grainy image for sure. But it does have 360 cameras, which is quite impressive. Yeah. And 
uh, a vehicle dating back as far as this one does. This bar over here, very reminiscent of the Toyota mm -hmm. that we had in the TRD Pro Tundra. I like whatever texture that is. Yeah, we got, it's like fake aluminum and different texture up here, fake carbon fiber down here. I'm surprised you haven't asked about this. I haven't even noticed that. Really? What is that? This is the manual transfer case, and I absolutely love that it has a manual transfer case. So right now we are in too high, two wheel drive, so just the rear wheels are getting power. Mm. Uh, we could stop, pull it back, put it in four high, all four wheels would get power, put it in neutral, slam it over and forward, and it would be in low range. So, so I it's like if you're off-roading and need yes. different Yes. Or if you're in snow or something. Yes. So it gives you different traction. Your car has an electronic transfer case. Most vehicles nowadays have electronic transfer cases. I approve of a manual one. Like you can hold it and feel it vibrating. It is very mechanical. And I have a feeling that's going to go away on the next one. Why? It's just everything's going electronic nowadays. So I know. Doesn't it stink? Yeah. 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 <laughs> when it comes to stuff like that. Mr. Tech guy. Transmissions. All right, so seats are comfortable. You like general layouts on the inside, textures, different things going on. Uh, driving dynamics, fairly comfortable, fun. It's comfortable, it's fun. It's probably not something I would want as my daily driver, but I know that there are people out here that this is the kind of vehicle yep. that they do want for their daily driver. It's just not for me as and, a daily driver. And then, I can see this more as a weekend fun yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Oh, oh, and we haven't talked about, um, does it have the pull-out tray yes, at the it back? Does. That's my favorite feature. So this one <laughs> is optioned with a pull-out rear tray, so that rear cargo area comes out to you. I absolutely love it. Tucker loves it. He loves to ride on it back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely love that feature. This one's got running boards, so even though we're, we have 9.6 inches of ground clearance, How's getting in and out for you, Miss Five Foot Holly? Yeah, it's been a lot easier with the running boards. The last one we had did yes. not have the running boards, and that was one of my major complaints, yeah. which I know is something you can add. Right. But it gave me bruises on the backs of my legs getting in and out of the vehicle. Me personally, I feel like they're really high up, and I'm either having to jump over them or, like, I... I, jump. I they're not at a good hot for they're, you. Not for me, but for you. Sounds like they're perfect for Tucker. Yeah, I haven't really, he really Tucker really likes them too. He can uh -huh. climb in by himself. And uh, that's a good spot to talk about child seat installation. So, some things about this back seat in the 4Runner. You do get some cup holders down in the doors, so that's good for kids. The running boards do allow for Tucker to get in the back. And this is a 60-40 split bench folding rear seat. So, you can actually fold the thing completely flat. And I said 60-40, but it's actually 40-20-40 because you can fold down this center section as well. But just look at absolutely how much room you get when everything is folded. This thing is absolutely massive, but I'm going to bring in my son's forward-facing Graco car seat and see just how easy it is to install. Oh, as always, be sure and follow all manufacturer recommendations for installing child safety seats. But I will throw the top tether back there and... The lower latches are kind of hidden within some leather on the seat back, not the seat bottom, because as I just showed you, the seat bottom does tilt forward and lean forward, which makes finding them just a little more difficult than your typical lower latch system, and then you can pull it into place. Tightening up the back requires climbing over this massive rear bumper, but there are three across la top latch connectors back here all the way across the back seat. So in theory, you could get three car seats all the way across and installation is very simple. I'd give it a solid A minus on this one. The only real detractor is just how far you have to go to get that top tether in place because you have that massive rear bumper and a little bit of cargo area to traverse over. Other than that, pretty simple. 
and pretty easy. Child seat goes in the back. Those rear seats do recline. They are 60-40 and they fold flat, like flat, flat, because the seat bottom folds forward and the seat back folds into that void. So uh, lots of room back there. You can definitely overland in one of these or just, you know, camp in it one of these if, if you wanted to but uh it's been a fun vehicle very well equipped here any other thoughts before we jump into price uh let's jump into price because that could change my whole perspective i, get, I do feel like i don't know i sometimes give jeep a hard time but i feel like this feels like a jeep but more comfortable than inside oh well, I would agree. Oh, okay. okay. Very similar vein and um, very similar approach to things. And due to its boxy shape, it feels very Jeep-like inside. Like Wrangler. Yeah. Yes. Many people compare them to. Okay. So I will note, uh, on this TRD Pro model, you get a special exhaust, which with the five-speed automatic in this, feels like it's always just hooing at you when you're on the road. Uh, this does have a four liter naturally aspirated V6, so that's nice. Until you talk about fuel economy, 16 city, 19 highway, 17 combined, and that's exactly what we're getting. Um, but any guesses on the price? No. No, none <laughs> whatsoever. Um, okay, let's see. <clears throat> The, the last Toyota product we had was the Tundra, full-size right. pickup truck, brand new. It was, for all intents and purposes, 70000 So just mm. to give you some barometer so you don't way overshoot it like you did Toyota Supra. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that was a I know, I know, I know. Um, okay. Let's say 65. Oh, 55, mm. 440. Wow. Which we've driven, I have driven a lot of three row and a lot of luxury vehicles lately. Uh, tested out the 2023 Kia Telluride in multiple different trims. I don't know, that 55 kind of kind of hits Hit me you? a little harder than it, I feel you like it should. You think so for a truck base type yeah. car? Yes and no. I, I guess for me it's the fact it. that it's kind of old right. and... I, I don't know. I, I know that there is a new one on the horizon. We don't know anything about it yet, but I don't know. I, it, it seems like a, a slightly tough sell for me, but you're getting a known off-road commodity and you know what you're getting in Toyota too. So reliable, right. capable. Yeah, you could drive it till the wheels fall off. Which would be forever. And when you don't have a lot of technology, that's not even an issue. Exactly. With a vehicle growing older. And how does it compare to, like, the Bronco, like you were saying? So, uh, lines up favorably. Uh, Bronco's got a few tricks up its sleeve, so it's got... I meant price-wise. Oh, I can't tell you that off the top of my head, but I will put those down on the bottom of the screen. You just don't have those memorized? What can I say? Numbers floating all around in here. <laughs> so, final thoughts knowing the price? About um, the same? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I don't think I would choose this as my daily driver, but I definitely think it would be a fun weekend vehicle, off-roading, camping, um, definitely those, like, family picnics and stuff like that where you're, like, out watching fireworks yeah. or something because of the pull-out, like tailgating. Um, I think that's definitely fun. I'm not as thrown off by the $55 price tag as you are. I mean, I guess you're comparing that with the tech and stuff like that mm. which we've said many times on the channel the tech is not a big deal to me but I yeah. feel like as far as um, the comfort of the ride the type of vehicle it is the type of you know the off-road capabilities and stuff like that I feel like 55 is fair um, yeah. to me um, and, and like you said it's a Toyota you can drive it forever so I have to ask now you know everything it's all spelled out for you a little redemption in the air for old Forerunner TRD Pro? Yes, I feel like maybe I was just grumpy the last time we had it. I don't know. It's definitely in a different mind frame, but it's funny because 
every time I bring up the one car I didn't like, it was that one, and it's redeemed itself. I will not say that any longer. <laughs> this is a fun car. It's fun to drive. I wish I would have driven it more since we've had it. There you go. <laughs> And on that bombshell, we will end this episode. I thank you so much for walking, watching. If you want to know more from Holly, it's some behind-the-scenes stuff from her, go find her on Instagram, at Female Consumer. You can find everything we do at gtgaragetalk.com. Be sure to subscribe, follow, like, all the things. And, uh, yeah, until next time, gearheads. Bye. Tucker, do you want to be on camera? No, I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm ready. I'm not ready. Okay. No, I just don't want it to fall off. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Are you still recording? We are still recording, yes, sir. Were y'all letting me do, do my part? Yeah, it's your part now. Uh, I already did my part. My part was clapping. What, buddy? Yeah, you have something to tell us?